Thanks for the support as a channel member, Andrew Alexander. Well, the playoffs. Yippee. The last time I won in the playoffs, there was no grey in my beard. Hello and welcome to part 32 of non to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the playoffs. At the very least, we have a playoff semi-final against the team we wanted to avoid, Port Vale. Um, I'll just show you how the quarterfinals went. So the first rounds of the playoffs, uh, Fylde lost at home to Crawley, Port Vale beating Eastleigh 1-0, which means um, third place, us, are at home to fifth place, Port Vale and Crawley, the team I said to keep an eye on in the last episode. These are the two teams I wanted to avoid, Port Vale and Crawley. Um, and as it turns out, if we're going to get promoted, we're going to have to probably beat them both. Um, but Crawley will then be away against Torquay, a 10-point difference between Torquay and Crawley come the end of the season. And desperate times call for desperate measures. Our form has been absolutely rotten pretty much since December. I mean, we talked quite a lot earlier in the season about how front-loaded the season was. Thank goodness the season was as front-loaded as it was because we've spent more than half the season on a calendar basis being terrible, really, really poor. Look at that sea of red we've got there. Since December, we've only won one, two, three, four league games since December. To get promoted, we need to win two in a week. It'll be fine because we're changing the tactic. We're changing to the answer, um, which... I mean, I've invented this this shape. I don't know if it's ever been done in football before. I'm describing it, um, and I, I'm, I describe it from left to right rather than the traditional back to front because back to front just it sounded weird. It didn't sound like something football-y. Um, but I'm doing a two-three-three-two. Two. That's what we call this, aka the answer. Two-three-three-two. Two. The answer. Never been done before in football. Revolutionary, and I think. Judging by how nice all these little partnerships that it's created are, um, I think we're probably onto something here. Um, so we're going with Marshall in goal, a back four of Hendry Price, Colvin and Senior, Adidoc and Livermore, Magoma and Ocoflex in midfield, and then Alcock and Andrucci together up front. It is the redemption story of Ben Andrucci, who is is he even unhappy? He's not even unhappy anymore. When did that? I didn't even notice he wasn't unhappy anymore. He could have been back in the team forever. Um, he's, I mean, he's. It's not that he's not played. He's he's been back on the bench for a little while, but ever since the QPR nonsense, um, you can see he's only scored twice because we've just been messing him around. But he's back in the team and hopefully about to score the goals that get us into the football league. That's the plan. So here we go. Then kick off a clock. It's Leamington against Port Vale. Strangely, Ben Andrews. She's not got match fitness. I mean, he should have kept himself match sharp while I wasn't using him for six months. I mean, to be fair, the poor form does coincide with him being out of the team. So maybe having him back in the team, we fix the form. Wouldn't that be awesome if we managed to do that? Um, but we've seen quite a lot in previous matches just how well Olcock plays as a target man, even when he's not playing as a target man. So I'm hoping that he can carry that on. Now we're actually asking him to play as a target man and we've got a proven goal scorer alongside him waiting for those flick-ons. I just noticed pre-match as well, it is an absolute sellout here at Butts Park. Um, 4,000 fans crammed into the ground. They've got to play with a mohawk. Um, Cross comes in and immediately we've given away a penalty. That is not ideal. We need a big moment from Marshall here or else today is already going down the drain. I mean, it's straight at him and hes I think he's got fingertips to it as well. And he's just kind of pushed it up into the roof of the goal. And we are now leaving ourselves with a lot to do. Um, let's just have a look at it from the other angle. It is straight down his throat. He gets both hands to it and somehow it's still a goal. I love Marshall for his distribution and his command of his area. Sometimes his shot stopping is a little alarming. And we saw an example of it there. We saw earlier in the season, there was a penalty where he just didn't move at all. This one... If he'd have not moved at all, it would have hit him in the face and we'd have been okay. But instead, he ducked and put his hands up in the air and didn't save it. And we've had a corner there that despite having six foot five Shea Price, we've been no threat from at all. And now we're looking to, to build back again from 
the the same move. I don't know what we've done there. The highlights continuing, which is troubling because it means we're probably about to give away a goal because we've now not got the ball. Can we can we get the ball back, please, lads? Port Vale. I mean, this is this is it's like men against boys at the moment. It's because they're full time, we're part time. But there's Olcock looking for the ball over the top to Andrucci, but. Um, Andrucci, of course, like we said, not match fit, not match sharp. Didn't really seem to have any idea what's going on. We're asking everybody to play in a completely unfamiliar system as well, which probably isn't a great idea. But that's a lovely ball from Oco Flex. And Andrucci is in. And Ben Andrucci is back, boys and girls. It's his 20th goal of the season. It's like he was never away. His dreams of a move to the championship have been killed by his excellent man management manager um and he is back in the goals get a new contract in front of that boy immediately 20 goals for him now this season it's 1-1 it's game on the new tactic works i told you it was the answer price now with the free kick finds livermore and it's back to price and now price forward to Adi Dockham and Olcock, who's dropped deep, slots it in beautifully to Andrucci. And there's his second. And our front two combined. And Ben Andrucci, where's he been for five months? Where have these goals been? Our hero has returned. And Andrucci has got his second of the game in front of 4,000 people packing out Butts Park. And uh, that's, that's a lovely finish from Andrucci. He is up for it today. He's getting into the Football League one way or the other. He's decided, if I'm not going to let him leave, he's going to drag this team by the scruff of the neck into the Football League. Port Vale have been the better team, but we are the team who are ahead at half-time. Leamington 2, Port Vale 1. We've had two shots on target and scored them both. We'll take, we don't care, by hook or by crook, we want to go to Wembley. I think the final was at Wembley. We want to go to the Football League. In the other tie, it's Torquay nil, Crawley nil at the moment. Senior with the long throw, um, but it's headed clear. But it is back with Senior again at right back and now Magoma um, to Livermore. And now Olcock shooting from range and Olcock scored as well. This tactic, it's the one. We just needed a front two. That's all we needed. We needed both of these boys in together. The strike partnership. I think this is the first time in the save we've done two up top. Certainly from the start of a match, I think it is. And goodness me, is it working? Olcock just takes the ball back to goal. Quick turn. Shoots from range. It's 3-1. We've still got a long way to go. There's 40 minutes left in this game. We've only had three shots on target. So it's just been some exceptional performances from the two strikers today. We've not actually played particularly well but those boys up top are trying to make sure that they get to play together on a more regular basis Adi Dokken now there's our fourth shot on target and our fourth goal I've been on the wrong end of this match so many times Port Vale are being FM'd right now and I am loving every moment of it it's 4-1 we have just I, don't, I can't even explain what's happening today but it is 4-1 to Leamington. And I think, it, are we on our way to Wembley? Marshall now with the Marshall lump looking for Andrucci. And um, it should be aimed at Olcock really for the flick on, but Olcock does win it back. And now Livermore to Magoma and Ocoflex. And Andrucci's in for the hat trick. He rounds the keeper and he scores. What on earth is going on? We were in such poor form going into these playoffs. We've done a tactical change because I'm a genius. We've done a tactical change and now we're absolutely thumping Port Vale. Ben Andrucci, when he's still scoring for us in League One, we'll look back on this second half of this season as, a, you know what? Kev's man management of Andrucci there was outstanding. He managed to somehow keep him at the club, turn him around and then remember when he got a hat-trick in both playoff matches to get us into the Football League. What a man. 5-1. Still half an hour to go. We've started this second half in ridiculous fashion. Magoma now and it's six. That's nine goals for him from central midfield. Shows what an important signing he has been and a number of them have been exactly that goal, that free kick. He can certainly hit a set piece and 6-1 now, and this is this is dumb. This, I acknowledge this is stupid, what we're witnessing here. We've scored six goals off seven shots on target. We've scored six goals off an XG of 1.03. We have absolutely... No Poor Vale are ahead on XG. They're going to be fuming. Their manager's going to be kicking the power cable. Oh, no, the computer turned itself off. Guess we'll have to restart that one. 
Yeah, you cheating scumbag. Right, McInef. Can he play on the left side of midfield? He sort of can. Um, so we'll get him in there playing on the left-hand side of midfield. Is Arcoflex better as an option over there? Um, not really. Um, so we'll we'll use McInef. Um Senior is uh, not having the best of times out there, so we'll bring Harvey Rhodes on to play it right back. And uh, both centre-backs are shattered. Um, I think we probably need to just save their energy for the final, because I think it's safe to assume at this point that we have a playoff final in our near future. 6-1 in front of 4,000 home fans. This is this is the kind of match that encourages players to come back, that encourages fans to come back. And we've only gone and made it seven. I've never seen a playoff semi-final like it. We are going to be buzzing going into this final. I am starting to get a little bit worried that we might be using up all our goals, though. I don't know what's going on in the other match, but save a little bit for the final, lads. Torquay, 1-0 up now over Crawley. So as it stands, it is going to be the teams that finish second and third. Um, in a true playoff final, a proper playoff final. And we've just scored seven goals in a football match, I think, for the first time in the save. Um, Torquay needing extra time to get past seventh-placed Crawley. I mean, I it, it worries me. It terrifies me to tempt fate and say it. But based on what we've just seen across those two matches, we've got to be favourites, right? Right? Going to Wembley. Well, as you would expect, we are unchanged for the playoff final. Um, we have actually extended Shea Price's loan for another year um, off the back of that. So he's going to be with us next season, regardless of what league we're in. And Ben Andrucci has agreed to a new contract. He's not actually officially put pen to paper yet, but he's added a year and dropped his salary demands down, despite the fact that once again, we've got football league clubs interested. It took one match to get the football league clubs interested in him again. Um, but... Fingers crossed we get him tied down to that longer-term deal immediately after after full-time, regardless of what happens to the result. Um, Ocoflex has reacted badly to my last chat. This was my team meeting, saying I didn't expect them to win. Olcox reacted well. I tried to ease pressure. Ocoflex wants the pressure. He can have some pressure then if he wants. Unchanged team at Wembley. Playoff final against Torquay. Can we make it to the Football League? Can I break my horrible run in the playoffs that has been going on for nearly a year of real life. I hope so. I think I think we're probably going to do some uh, some fist pumping. Um, I'm going to tell the boys that I have faith in them because you know what? It's Wembley. Everyone gets a fist pumping, right? Just do a football, boys. You know what to do. It's Wembley. Look at it—a packed out, sold out Wembley, and. Uh, I mean, to be fair, did that say 38,000 people here? I'm mocking them, but for the National League playoff final, 38,000 people in attendance. I don't know how many of them have come from Leamington and how many are from Torquay, but I don't think there's 38,000 Torquay fans, surely. Addy Dockin charging forward to open the uh, open the match up here. Only a minute gone, but we are we are feeling good off the back of that previous match. And, uh, I mean, I wouldn't back against a scoring from this first move. Olcock is in. Oh, my goodness. Firstly, their goalkeeper looks enormous. And secondly, he's made a bit of a, a bit of a mess of that. And hopefully that's a sign of things to come. We've got a corner. Less than two minutes of the match played. Hendry with the in-swinger. Um, but it is cleared. And Olcock is going to be there to try and pump the ball back into the area and keep the ball going. In fact, he's played Addy Dockin in. If he can find the cross, he cannot. He was offside anyway. Um, and the move ends but that was a that's been a bright start for us more of that please boys um and now it's Torquay with a throw deep in their own half and hopefully this is because we're going to win the ball back and create an attack of our own and not because they're going to score a wonder goal that passes through every player en route to goal Colvin nods it down to Addy Dockin um Andrucci back to Hendry and now Hendry and Hendry and Addy Dockin are getting in each other's way a little bit here um, and between the two of them, they've managed to just give the ball away. That was a little bit odd, and a little bit poor. And now Torquay um, had the had the counter attack on, but have given it to Addy Docker and Olcock playing it into the path of Andrucci. And now Oco Flex. What I like about this four four two that we're doing is because we're playing quite narrow. The wingers both get involved in the central midfield, and Andrucci's in, and there's his first goal of the game, and it's been disallowed. What's it been disallowed? Offside. I mean, that's that's a close one. 
but it is offside. I wonder if we might be playing too narrow for Wembley. We are getting a lot of joy in the middle because you see both Andy Dock and Anarcho Flex tucking in quite a lot, which is what we're asking them to do. We don't want to play too wide. That was a change we made to the old 4 2 3 1. <gasps> oh, that was horrible. And we've left it in for this system. But certainly on a pitch this size, it is noticeable um, how narrow we're playing. And Torquay are trying to get wide of us. And now they've scored. <laughs> oh. Because our long throws aren't going to be very effective here either on this enormous pitch. Don't be downhearted, boys. We scored seven goals in the last game. We know we've got it in us. And if we haven't, we know we've got a system that will hopefully lead us to the title next year. But we kind of want to get promoted this time around. It would be awesome to have a back-to-back -back promotion and to finally break the playoff curse that has been a, a problem for me for so long now. I want to become the, the playoff king. The irony is, in real life, I'm a Peter fan and we're very good at playoffs. Um, but apparently, I don't get to have it in real life and in game. You have to choose one. I guess I'll accept it in real life. I'd like a little bit of it in game though. 2 0, and the it feels like the dream is over already. I can't believe we played so well against Port Vale. Although, realistically, we didn't, did we? That's what we've got to remember. Remember the XG. Remember how few shots on target we actually had. We had a stupendous performance from our two strikers in the game against Port Vale. But we didn't actually play particularly well, despite scoring seven goals. Um, and Torquay are now doing it back at us. They've had two shots on target, scored two goals. Um, not ideal. We're going to demand more. And I don't know, do we push the boys a little bit wider or do we keep doing what we've just seen work in the last match? It's it's a tricky one because I'm seeing in the match engine. I, I, I saw the wingers cutting in and liked what they were doing. And it's not as if Torquay are getting wide of us and ruining us from out wide. So I think we probably just stick to the game plan and hope that Hope that there's a twist in this story yet. Um, although it is constantly Torquay with the ball every time we come back for a highlight now. We started so brightly. We had that early chance. We had the goal disallowed. And it's like the goal being disallowed has knocked the stuffing out of us a little bit. It's been all Torquay from that moment on. And we need to, we need to figure out a plan. I don't know what the plan is going to be. Um... Thrashing the arms might be a good plan. In fact, no, we'll point the finger so we can do the team talk that the assistant manager recommends. He's a wise man. We'll follow what he tells us to do. Um, I don't think there's anything to change. I think we just keep doing what we're doing and hope that it starts working. That's management for you. If you want to criticise my management, remember the first match at Ocoflex, who was like, no, we're definitely going to win. We'll play well then, idiot. Because at the moment, you know, you're not playing like we're going to win. The two strikers have just not been involved today. Not been involved at all. Right, we're going to go back to this system. And we're going to take Olcock off and bring McInef on and just try and get, get someone more involved in the game. We need some kind of attacking to take place, please. And um, we'll bring Adedoyan on for Ocoflex. And um, Magoma's broken, so we'll bring Smith on in midfield. To allow Livermore to get a bit further forward. We're going to go attacking. And we're going to cross our fingers. We're going to demand more. And hopefully the change in system. I mean, I guess it's only fair. We FM'd Port Vale in the semi-final. And now we're getting FM'd in the final. We've got a penalty. This could be... This could give us a lifeline. This is what we need, a lifeline right now. It's going to be Mekinuf, who's only just come on. I still can't say his name consistently correctly, and he scored anyway. What a man. And now we are a goal away from really piling the pressure onto Torquay. They needed extra time in the semi-final. Can we find an equaliser from somewhere? Please, boy, we're just encouraging now. I'm not even going to demand more. Just come on, lads, please. Let's let's at least take it to extra time. Let's make this interesting. Won't somebody do something? There's two minutes left. What on earth do we do? We just need to send everybody forward. Price is six foot five. Get him up there as a target, ma'am. It'll be fine. What's the worst that can happen? Um, and then we just want to pump the ball up towards the target, man. 
Where's the option for pump the ball up to target, man? There it is. Um, and we need to be... Where's goalkeeper distribution? That's one of these, isn't it? Want to be aiming at the target, man. So, there you go. Target, man. That's what we're looking for. And I think it's probably time. Two minutes to go. We've got a six foot five goalkeeper here as well. Just get him in there. You would, wouldn't you? In this situation, you absolutely would. If you say you wouldn't, you're a liar. Of course you would. Where's my... Oh, I've already put him up front. Hold on. He wants to be there. I was looking for my other centre-back, wondering why I couldn't find him. Where is he? There. Probably not giving ourselves enough time for this to make an impact, but you never know. Can we have a corner, please? A corner, please. <gasps> We've got a corner. He hit the crossbar. Marshall just hit the crossbar. We just hit the crossbar in the final 10 seconds of a playoff final with a space in the Football League at stake. Our goalkeeper hit the crossbar and this game is so cruel that despite us having 2.87 XG to their 0.82, it couldn't just let that hit the crossbar and bounce down over the line and give us a few more minutes. I said we'd wasted, to, we used too many goals against Port Vale. We got too overexcited. I tried to bring the lads down with a team meeting and balance it out a little bit so we didn't get cocky. And it wasn't enough. I feel a little bit sick now. I guess we've got another year in the National League then. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Thank you very much for watching.